Coach, we had Rocky on this morning. He says, among your many talents is an affection for trick plays. <laughs> well, for those of you who have watched me over the years, you know, I just saw Hacksaw out there. Uh, yeah, we'll have a trick play or two every game, and it's something that I've always done. And, you know, I hate people to think of me as a trick coach because we're going to play football. But I think what it does by having a special play, so to speak, number one, it gives you a chance to make a big play. It gives you a momentum play. Number two, maybe score a touchdown. And uh, number three, it makes the opponent have to practice those plays in the, in the future. And when they're practicing those plays, it's taken away from the preparation time of trying to stop your base offense. And the thing that I do is, you know, I, I put a player two or three in, okay? And uh, the kids know that I'm going to run it in the game. I think a lot of coaches install trick plays and never, never run them in the game. So I think it's fun for the, for the players, it's fun for the coaches, it's fun for the fans, fun for the media, particularly when they work. <laughs> Coach, what, you, what in your mind are some of the main questions that need to be answered coming out of the camp for your reason? Well, I think the big thing is, you know, uh, I, I think we've, we've got some running backs, I think we've got some wide receivers, I like our tight ends. I think we've got to find a couple offensive linemen and uh, we need to find some, some quality depth at quarterback. You know, who's going to back up Adam at this point? And, uh, and then Adam's got to continue to grow and learn the offense and uh, become a little more accurate throwing the football. So the, even though the media, media guys list Quinn Taylor as a backup, you're saying that's not sort of like a culture? Well, we're going into fall camp, and you've got to start somewhere. And right now, if we had to play a game, he would be second, yes. What do you guys like out of them? Out of Kaler, mm -hmm. number one, he's very smart. He's put on 20 pounds since he's been here. Uh, he's extremely accurate. He was seven for seven in the spring game. Uh, can't break a pane of glass, okay? So his arm needs a little bit of work, but uh, <laughs> but uh, at least it doesn't uh, hit and ricochet and gain speed. You know, it's, uh, it's one of those things where a guy's got a chance to catch the ball. And sometimes, I, I think people are enamored so much with big, strong arms that they forget what being a quarterback is all about. And, and one of the big things is completing passes. And when you throw a rocket, it better be perfect because if it's off a little bit, it's gone. Where when you throw one like, like Kaler, you know, it's a knuckleball and it's kind of going like this, like a balloon, you have a chance to adjust to it and make the catch. And that's why he completed seven out of seven in the spring game. He's very accurate. And I'm being a little facetious. I love the kid. He's, but he's, he's uh, really done a great job for us. And how about, I mean, Well, you know, after spring, he, he injured his back a little bit, and I think it was an old injury that came up, and he wasn't able to do much, from what I understand, after spring and in the summer. And we kind of set a program f for him. You know, uh, Brian Sight and myself did some things to say, hey, this is what you need to do. And I don't think he had time to do a lot of that because of the, the injured back. He needs to become more accurate throwing the football. That's the biggest thing, okay? Uh, in this offense, I would hope that you can complete about 67% of your passes. Just some drills that we, we uh, showed him that he needed to do to try to become more accurate. You know, obviously we as coaches can't be out there, so we told him this is what you need to do and you, you, know, you need to go out and do it. But uh, I don't believe he was able to do that much until right towards the end of uh, summer. So is he like 100% now? He says he is, yeah. Yeah, I hope he is. He hasn't been hit yet. Pardon? Watch, I've had some great ones, either as their position coach, a coach, or, or with them. You know, the, the, the Marcus Allen, the Charles White, the Ricky Bells, the, the uh, Darren Lewis, uh, the, you know, Tony Cherry's, uh, uh, Matt Forte, who rushed for over 2,000. You know, I, I've had a lot of great run backs at, uh, at, at schools I've been. I haven't coached them yet, seen them exactly. I've seen them in spring a little bit, and I've seen some film. Uh, I'd say he's very strong. He's very, very strong, okay? Uh, he's extremely quick. Uh, he's very physical. I don't really know how fast he is. You know, we don't time guys here, so I don't know how fast, but I think he's got good speed. Uh, I'd say he, uh, we're gonna find out because he's gonna get a lot of opportunities, let's put it that way. Our tailback is kind of the guy who, is the guy that's gonna get the football.
concern is that, and, and what do you need to do to, to develop that? Well, we got Colin Lockett, who's a senior at Split In, and I, I think he's got a chance to be a pretty good player. And then, and then uh, 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 Izell Ruffin is at the flanker position. He's got a lot of ability. And then, of course, Vizzy and Denzel were two walk-ons that both have scholarships now. Uh, they had really good springs. Uh, and then Eric Judge, we got a, a young freshman who really came on at the end of spring. So I've got five guys right now I feel very comfortable with. And now we've got to see if some other guys can develop. But uh, I feel good about that, that group. Coach, how about the offensive line? I mean, you moved Zach Dilley back to center, uh, back from center to right tackle after the spring. Right. What are your thoughts on the line at this point? Well, and I was just talking to, to Mike Schmidt, our line coach, after practice. We're, what we're going to do is we're going to find out who the best five guys are, and then we're going to put them in the best spots for them to be successful and for us to have success. So uh, right now, there's some guys that are obviously set. You know, uh, Quigley is going to be the left tackle. You know, Gordon's going to be the left guard. From there, we're going to start moving people around and figure out who are the next three guys, basically. No, he's going to be a right guard, but he's competing with Green. And Coach, ideally, how many uh, wide receivers would you like to have in a rotation this season? Well, when we when we travel and all, I mean, minimum five, maximum six. Uh, you know, if we keep him healthy, that's all you really need. You know, we'll play with uh, two, three, four, and sometimes five wide receivers. Well, let me tell you a story then, okay? It's interesting. We're watching uh, the bowl game, my wife and I, okay? Because she has a big part on this too, okay? <laughs> After 45 years, I still want to be married. So we're watching the bowl game, and she's looking at Rocky, and she's, God, if you ever went back into coaching, that'd be the only guy I'd want you to go coach for. A week later, Rocky called me. And I'm on the phone, and my face is red, and she's looking at me saying, oh, damn. <laughs> it just happened. So we talked, and we came down here and spent a day with Rocky and all, and, and we went back, and we decided that, hey, I, I'm not, I wasn't going anywhere else. I wasn't going across the country anymore or doing anything else. This is close enough to home. My wife is still there. In the spring, I went back and forth, and now in the fall, she'll come back and forth. I've got a little condo out in uh, La Jolla there. So, you know, we, we'll be back and forth. We've been married a long time. I've got kids and grandkids in, in Thousand Oaks, so my wife's okay. But... Uh, it didn't take long. You know, I, I've still got a lot of energy. I'm an old guy, but I got a lot of energy, and I've got a little bit of knowledge, and, and I get along so well with Rocky. I mean, uh, we just fit so well that uh, I wouldn't have done it for anyone else, let's put it that way. All that said and done, Bob, uh, give us a little taste of where you think your offense is at and where it's going to go. Well, we haven't had a practice yet, let's put it that way. We've had some meetings, a little walkthrough. Uh, I'm trying to expose them to a lot of things, as I told them in this early part of camp. And then once we get closer to game time, we'll, we'll kind of condense things and do the things that they do best and uh, do the things that we can hopefully execute against the opponent we're going to play. But I, I think there's enough weapons that we can be in and out of a lot of different formations, a lot of substitution groups, run a lot of different plays. Uh, obviously, they ran the ball extremely well last year. I think they were 20th in the nation in, in Russian, and I think they were – you know, within the top 40 in scoring. But the one thing that I look at that kind of stood out at me was their passing. And I think it was like 107th in the country. So we need to improve the passing game. I think they did a great job last year. They ran the ball. They scored points. They won. And that's the ultimate thing. But we need to get better at throwing the football. And I, and I think we can. And that's a big emphasis of mine right now. I tell you what, if, if there was an MVP in spring practice, it was Robert Craighead. You know, he, he, uh, he learned the offense. He's very smart. He's a physical blocker. And he really did a great job of running routes and catching the ball. He made a lot of catches in spring. I am very, very impressed with him. And then, of course, you got Adam Roberts, who's backing him up. So we can play with some two tight ends. And we even got a third and fourth tight end. So you'll see us in some two tight end offense at times, too. But very impressed with Robert Craighead. 
Yeah, we, we looked at him and, and we looked at our offensive line position and we you know we need some depth at, at offensive line, but his body frame, he's just not going to be a real big guy. He's not wide and you know, he, he's more suited to a tight end position and he's probably more of a blocking tight end than a receiving tight end, but he's young and he can develop and uh, smart kid. And uh, so we, we got him there. So when we go some two or three tight end offense, he can play as well. No, I'd say Adam Roberts could be the second tight end, but he's also going to play some fullback position too. He's an H back, so he's a tight end, fullback, H back. He'll play a lot of different things. He uh, very smart, uh, catches the ball extremely well. Is a, is, a, is not quite the blocker that Craig is, but he's a good blocker.